On the table over here, we have the $330 Haymaker over here, which is definitely going to put a hard left hook on the glass chin of your wallet. It's expensive. I have tested a lot of flagship headphones in the $300 range, such as my daily driver, the Astro A50s. The HM100, the only headphone you'll ever need. That's a pretty bold statement there, Cotton. We'll see how it works out for them. Since I took the time and effort to dig up seven headsets out of my house, I might as well wear these for the rest of the video. As much as I'd love to, it's just not practical. This thing retails for $330, and in my opinion, that price tag is a little bit ambitious. Now, in the top right hand side of the box, you are going to see a bunch of logos over here, which do put a smile on my face. Bluetooth 5.0, which is the latest and greatest Bluetooth technology. Active noise canceling. Aptex low latency CSR. And Dirac, as in these are going to directly smack around the competition. I'm sure that's not what that stands for, but it's on there. I'm not going to lie, I knew I had an astronomical amount of controllers more than any mortal man should ever have. Or more realistically, anybody that has any sense with their money whatsoever. But, what is going on here? You can only wear one set of cans at a time. So since we're dealing with a beastly headset with a brutal price tag, we need an extravagant unboxing knife for this video. This is Damascus Steel, and this was a gift from my dad, so thank you very much. A blade worthy of opening a $330 headset, I guess. That just sliced that plastic like a hot knife through butter, or a hot knife through plastic, I guess. Let's put this bad boy back in its sheath before it ruins somebody's day, or month. Probably mine if I cut myself, because I'm old. It takes me a long time to heal. Peel you like a banana there, sweetheart. So on the right side of the box, you are gonna have some statistics or factoids about this product. In the back, you are gonna have a little paragraph explaining how kick-ass this headset really is. But you don't need to read this when you can just put them on your head and find out firsthand. And then over here, it shows you what's included in the box. Headset, obviously, if you don't get a pair of headphones, uh, call the police, you've been robbed. Two sets of memory foam ear pads. That is awesome, never seen that before. Usually you gotta pay out of pocket for replacement ear cups. And then a PC gaming controller adapter. We'll touch more on that in a little bit. Sliding her out of her outer case or outer shell, you will get popped in the chin with some bright blue branding that says Haymaker. Just from a cosmetic standpoint, I really do like the look of the box. And then she opens up like this. Oh my goodness gracious. Premium, comfortable, clean, innovative, uncompromising, custom, influential, modern, aggressive, smooth, superior, crisp, sleek, high-tech, tough, durable, influential, custom. Okay, it just looped back around now. So this little cardboard piece that has a little bit of marketing, branding on it and whatnot is also doubles as a foam divider to keep this thing in place. The unboxing experience is quite premium. It is what you would expect from a $330 headset. I mean, if you're getting some egg carton packaging and a couple of packing peanuts thrown in a $300 headset, that's a problem. You have your documentation in this little pouch. Okay, you can write your name down on here and stick it to your shirt in case you forget who you are. You have your instruction manual, which opens up like Leonardo da Vinci's date book. Very nice. Did no color, but there's pictures. English is the primary and uh, only language. Decent font, I would like it a little bit bigger, but it's informative and it does tell you how to use the product. Then you have a Haymaker sticker, but it's not just a sticker. It's one of those fancy decals that's translucent in the background. So you can go ahead and plaster this on the sweet tender rump of your vehicle or maybe the side of your PC tower. Then you have a quick start guide over here. So if you do not have the patience to read through an entire instruction manual, that's what the quick start card's for. And then you have important safety information telling you not to use this thing as a frisbee, not to choke anybody out with it, it's not garrote wire, not to pawn this thing for drugs as it is very expensive, not to repurpose the batteries on board to make a pipe bomb or anything like that. Stuff that sounds ridiculous, but you know people have done it. And then you have the pièce de résistance, which is the actual headset, which is inside of this hard carrying case, which has a faux or fake carbon fiber on the outside. At least I'm assuming this isn't real carbon. I mean, that'd be $300 right there just for the carrying case, no headset. So this is a relatively large case, so I'm assuming it's got your accessories in there. At least I hope so, because there was nothing else in the box. Okay, you have a little foam divider in here. It's going in the trash. Uh, you know what? We'll, we'll keep it, actually. We'll keep it. Awesome. This is a really nice case. This is a really nice case, actually. You have separate compartments in here for your accessories with this kind of moisture wicking material. That's the controller adapter, which we'll cover in a little bit. Also some faux carbon fiber on there as well. Vroom, vroom. Nice, you have an aluminum C-clamp in case you want to take this bad boy on a hike or something. Everyone wants to take a $330 gaming headset on a rugged outdoor hike or kayaking or something. 
All right, you've got a USB-C cable. It looks to be about a two-footer. It is braided. It does come with a Velcro tie back, which is one of the nice ones that stays connected. I like to see that. It's also not branded, so just a generic plain color. I also like to see that. Then you've got this controller adapter, which is USB-A on one end. Then you've got about four or five feet of braided cable here with a tie back. And then it leads down to this control block or module, which has volume up and down, mic mute, and another button that looks like it goes through EQ modes. It does have a couple of LEDs on there, including a 7.1 surround sound LED indicator to let you know you're in virtual surround mode. And then on this end, that's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now this is fantastic. It comes with additional ear cups, which are magnetized as you can see from, well, sure enough, the four magnets. In. And I've actually never unboxed or tested a headset that included additional ear cups, but that is great. And I would like to see that with a lot more headset and headphone companies, considering you're spending 300 plus dollars on a premium headset from Sony, Bose, etc., And then you got to spend 50, 60 bucks for ear cups when they get worn out. It leaves a sour taste in your mouth, ladies. Now these look very similar to Beats by Dre or Beats by Apple now, just in their styling, I'm sure the audio qualities night and day, but just in the way they look, it is labeled L for left and R for right. So you know which ear cup goes on which ear. Let's get this adjusted to my head. I do like the way that it adjusts. Nice resistance here. You can't tell, I can't relay this via video footage, but I'm actually using a good amount of strength to adjust these straps. So they are gonna hold position quite well. I have a relatively small noggin. It's kind of shaped like a cashew. These do have 40 millimeter drivers. Generally headsets that have 40 or smaller millimeter drivers aren't the most comfortable things in the world. Generally 50 and up, they're gonna be that true over the ear design where they're not on ear, but they actually go over your entire earlobe. These actually feel pretty good though. They feel like a 50 millimeter ear cup. So they stay on my head pretty good. I mean, if I'm head banging real hard, I can get them to wiggle off, but all in all, they stay on your head pretty good. And just the initial impressions with comfort, the ear cups do feel very good. You have this kind of leather, pleather or leatherette material in here, which isn't going to dissipate heat quite as much as these bad boys over here, which is why they have a second set of ear cups is because these right here are going to seal in the most amount of sound as where these are going to let out a little bit of noise in your room. So people will hear what you're listening to, but these have a moisture your wicking material that is going to keep your ears cooler for long playing sessions. I most likely will end up using these ear cups for the majority of my use with this headset, but we'll test both. It does fold as well. Again, true Beats vibes over here, right? So I'm feeling a little bit frisky. I'm going to use the leather or pleatherette material on the right and this moisture wicking material on the left and wear them simultaneously. So it cuts out a lot more ambient sound from your room, such as the fans of my PC and my HVAC system with the fully sealed leather version. This moisture wicking material is a lot cooler. I can tell that immediately. And I don't mean cooler as in like sweet, bro. I mean, cooler as in temperature wise. Now, one thing I noticed about the Haymaker that's unexpected and unacceptable especially at this price point is the overall fit and finish and the perceived build quality. Let me show you what I mean. This top piece is just a sticker here. And as you can see, it's already peeling up. It came out of the box like this. It started peeling up on the side and I have manually stuck it down with my hand a couple of times and it continues to pop up. So I'm most likely just gonna take a little dab of super glue and stick that down. But the fact that that is already peeling up is not a good sign. And also over here in this crease or seam, you can actually feel somewhat of a jagged edge. It's not very well aligned. And there is somewhat of what you would call a panel gap. Now I'm gonna give you a rundown of the controls on the Haymaker other than the slider, which is a three position switch. Everything is handled with swipe functions on the left and right ear cup. Now on the left ear cup, you do have the only physical control and it is a three way slider. In the all the way downward position, the headset is off. In the middle section, it is gonna be Bluetooth connectivity without noise canceling. And in the top or third position, it is with NC or noise canceling activated. Now, one thing I'm not a huge fan of is even when you turn the headset off, the RGB remains on indefinitely until your battery dies, until you turn it off manually. In order to do that, all the RGB controls is on the right ear cup. You swipe forward and backward to go through the different colors. There are eight in total. And then you swipe upward and downward to go through the different effects, such as breathing or pulsating in and out. And you can control the colors for each one of these effects as well. Haymaker is illuminated on the top as well as their logo on each ear cup. To turn the RGB off completely, you are gonna hold down on the right ear cup for three seconds and the same thing to turn it back on. On the right ear cup, you do have a USB-C connector, which is covered with this rubber plug. And on the left ear cup, you do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack also covered by a rubber plug. To remove the ear cups, they are magnetized, so I would recommend folding the ear cup that you're not changing out of the way and simply pulling out like that. It is very easy. They line up with these four magnets inside of the ear cup like that, and they will snap into place. As for adjusting for different head sizes, you do have these ratcheting straps on each side. There are no clicks or distinct steps. However, there is a very good resistance, and this definitely will hold position without wiggling on you. It is also fully foldable for storage. However, the ear cups do not swivel inward and outward, which I would like 
like to see. Now on the left ear cup, this is gonna be controls for all of your music. You are gonna double tap to play or pause your track. You are gonna swipe forward to go to the next track, swipe backward to go to the previous track, swipe up for volume up and down for volume down. Now these swipe commands actually work incredibly good and the sensor is very sensitive. You run a finger across the Haymaker logo and 95% of the time it will register your inputs. As you can see, the piano black on the sides will collect fingerprints and eventually micro scratches, but it does look rather handsome in combination with that faux carbon fiber. The headset is very comfortable with both included ear cups, the sealed back leather or pleatherette versions that I have installed now, as well as the mesh breathable material. Over here at the PC with the Haymaker strapped to my noggin, and as you can see, I am paired up via my iPhone 13 Pro. Noise canceling is currently off. However, you do get some passive noise cancellation because these are over the ear and because I do have these sealed back ear cups, it'll automatically muffle or dampen a lot of ambient sounds like the fans for my PC. But turning noise canceling on, it does work, but it artificially sounds like you're underwater. Everything is very hollow and tinny as opposed to the Bose Quiet Comfort Series, Sony's flagship in this price point, as well as AirPod Pros, which are cheaper, which completely cut out sound and make you feel like you're in an empty void and you can't hear anything at all. These muffle or dampen outside or ambient noises, but you're still going to hear them and it makes them sound a little bit artificially pumped in. You do also have a pass through mode, which I'll activate right now by triple tapping anywhere on the right ear cup. One, two, three. Works very good. As for overall audio quality, I expected just slightly more when it comes to peak volume. I wished it got about 15 to 20 percent louder. I had it maxed out practically the entire time I was testing these. Bass was a little bit underwhelming, which really surprised me considering these have a very Beats esque style. And generally, headphones like this that are not studio style monitors but are more so luxury listening or consumer grade headphones have kind of a natural equalizer blend that boosts up the low frequencies. And these were a little bit underwhelming in the low end. Not only will these not rattle your skull like some of the skull candy crushers, but sounded a little bit under par in the bass department. But on the other side, the mids and treble was actually crisp, clear, and very accurate. Now, I'm not saying you can use these as studio monitors to mix down a track in the beat lab or anything like that, but these do sound very good as far as an overall package. I just wish they got slightly louder and there was a little bit more bass or low end. Let's use the included PC adapter to do a little bit of gaming, then I'll finish up by giving you my final thoughts, pros, cons, and where you can pick these up if you're interested. Now, while you can't connect this headset via Bluetooth to your PC, I would recommend using the included USB to 3.5 millimeter connector, as you will get the fastest connection without lag or delay that is introduced commonly with Bluetooth, and you don't have to worry about the battery running out during a long gaming session. Plus, you have control of your audio with this inline control block that does allow you to turn the volume up and down, mute your microphone, as well as engage virtual 7.1 surround. Testing, this is an audio test with the built-in microphone on the Haymaker headset. I am now... In order to get the surround sound up and running on this headset, you are going to need to install the software or drivers from the website. The surround sound software being used here is Dirac, which I've actually never heard of. I've used Windows Sonic, I've used Dolby Atmos, so I'm excited to give it a listen. In order to get the software, you will come over here to products, go to the Haymaker product page, then come down here to download Dirac software, and you have two options available. I'm just clicking option one. Dropbox, huh? Uh, I don't like that. What's the other option? Google Drive. Yep, that looks safe. Google Drive can't scan file for viruses. This file is executable and may harm your computer. .msi files are supported, but something went wrong. Good. It says download up here. Let's give that a try. Oh, you got to sign up for Dropbox. I'm going to install this and it gives me a nasty virus. I'm going to give this company a stern talking to. As you can see, now that I've installed the software, if I press the virtual surround button, holy wow, that really does change the sound profile. So there's three different modes. There's off, there's 7.1 surround, and then there's HD, which stands for high definition, which is just a high definition stereo. So there's a virtual 7.1 surround that is simulating having seven speakers in one subwoofer. There's a stereo, which is just left and right. And then you have off, which is just a flat equalizer balance. So just listening to the ambient sounds here, let me close my eyes. So this is with everything off. Holy crap, the 7.1 surround is pretty impressive. The standard or flat mode where you have none of the LED lights on, that sounds good, and then the 7.1 sounds great. Now, I do not like the HD mode. Everything sounds a little bit flat, hollow, and tinny. I just turned down the game sound on OBS because I noticed the game was probably blasting your eardrums out of your canals.
switch it back over to the flat mode. So the pros and cons of the Haymaker headset, because there is a lot of both. We'll start with the cons, get those out of the way. First of all, those fit and finish issues that I mentioned earlier, like the sticker peeling up and a little bit of a rough edge or seal down the middle. Next up, this does not include a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, like what is seen on the bottom ear cup of these Razer Nari Ultimates over here, which is a tiny dongle that pops out and you can plug into the front of your tower, which gives you a dedicated 2.4 gigahertz connection, which is a faster, more accurate, more reliable, more consistent connection than Bluetooth. Yes, it does drain your battery quicker because of that because it has a higher refresher polling rate. It would be nice if they included that, especially if they are marketing this towards gamers, as a lot of gamers like myself have made the full transition to wireless headsets, but via Bluetooth, you most likely will get a little bit of input lag or delay. I would recommend if you are using this headset to use it wired plugged up with the USB connector as I did in this video for two reasons. One, you are going to get a lag-free consistent connection with the best battery life. And two, you are going to be able to take advantage of the Dirac 7.1 virtual surround, which sounds phenomenal. We'll be talking about that during the pros, but that is only available on the PC. If you're playing on console, what you're going to do is use the included 3.5 to 3.5 millimeter connector and plug that into the bottom of your console. I wouldn't recommend buying this headset if you are strictly a console gamer. Why? The PlayStation 5 has the Pulse 3D headset, which is $100 and sounds as good, if not better, if you are playing on the PlayStation 5 because it is meant to work specifically with the Tempest audio engine, the new audio drivers on board the PS5. Same thing with the Series S and X. They have a proprietary headset meant to work with that console. It integrates all of your settings and equalizer modes are right there in the dashboard in your settings. And that sounds phenomenally. Those are both $100 headsets designed for each one of those consoles. PC is the only platform that allows you to install the Dirac 7.1 surround drivers, which we did in this video. And it completely changes the profile of how these headphones sound. When they were connected to my phone, they were a little underwhelming. They weren't very loud. The bass was underwhelming, yet the mids and treble were pretty good. On the PC, with that 7.1 surround sound engaged, it actually sounded pretty damn good. Probably one of the best headsets I've tested on PC. And that is because of the Dirac 7.1 surround, which again is only on Windows 10 and 11, I would assume. But it says in the instruction manual, Windows 10. The next con, it's kind of nitpicky, but the RGB stays on when you turn off the headset and you have to hold down on the right ear cup to get the RGB to turn off. Now on to the pros. The packaging is incredibly premium and it's a nice experience unboxing it. So it most likely would make a good gift because it is a very nice packaging experience as you can see from the hard carrying case over my shoulder. Two, cosmetically, I think this headset looks very, very good with that faux carbon fiber, a little bit of brushed aluminum inside of the headband here, nice quality ear cups, and that RGB, which is fully controllable as shown earlier. Third pro, the headset is incredibly comfortable. I felt virtually no pressure on my temples. It is very light, so it is not fatiguing to wear this headset for long gaming sessions. And the ear cups, both included sets, are very good. That's the fourth pro. They do include a second set of ear cups, which is a different design. You have a mesh ear cup with perforated holes that will keep your ears from getting sweaty. But if you want a sealed back design and you prefer the feeling of leather or pleatherette on your ears, then use those ear cups. Or if one of them gets worn out, you have an extra pair. They also snap in and out very easily with those magnets. Next up, the battery life. This does have somewhat of a quick charge where you are going to get a full charge in around two hours. They have an estimated standby time of over 6,000 hours, which is a pretty ambitious number. I don't know how accurate that is. But when you are gaming on PC via that USB connector, you are getting around 14 hours of gameplay. Yes, it is still draining the battery slowly, even though you are plugged in via USB. If you're using the USB line into your PC, but you have NC or noise canceling on, you're getting 12 hours, not 14. I would recommend not messing around with the noise canceling at all. I didn't think it was fantastic. It did work, but it actually sounded a little bit jarring or disorienting having it on because you could still hear everything. It just sounded a little bit muffled, artificially modified, but you could still hear it, which is defeating the purpose of ANC in the first place. I would just not mess with the ANC at all. It's going to save battery life. And because these are fully sealed over the ear headphones, you're getting a certain amount of natural passive noise cancellation just by them covering your ears. They're almost like wearing earplugs or earmuffs. And if you are connecting this via Bluetooth with active noise canceling, say for example, to a cell phone or a Nintendo Switch, you are going to be getting 9.6 hours. And again, two hours or under for a full charge. So that's a huge perk. And the final pro and the biggest one, in my opinion, would be the sound quality with the Dirac 7.1 surround sound, which again, I've mentioned it before, is only on PC, but it's sounded amazing. So you have three sound modes. One is with no LED lights illuminated, and that is a flat mode. It sounded okay, but it was just that, rather flat. 
Then you have then you have a red LED light in the middle where it says HD or high definition. That one I blatantly didn't like. That was worse than the flat mode. But when you click it into 7.1 surround, that's when this headset really comes alive and sounds good. In fact, I would say better than most headsets I've tested. Maybe the best headset I've tested. I'm going to have to run a couple comparisons here. My daily drivers are Astro A50s, which is a $300 wireless headset specifically for PC and Xbox. And that sounds very good. I do think the Haymaker might have dropped a right hook. See what I did? They call it the Haymaker. Um, no, seriously, though, it does sound very, very good to the point to where it is one of the best headsets I have heard for PC. Again, console gamers, I, I can't really recommend it, to be honest, because you got the Pulse 3D and the Xbox proprietary headset, each for $100. And if you're somebody that just wants this as a headset to take to the gym or to take out in town or skateboard with or something, you're probably better off getting something like AirPod Pros. I don't like the standard AirPods, but the Pros are pretty damn good. But if you were a PC gamer, gamer and don't mind being wired, this headset sounds damn good and looks pretty sweet too. Now, the final thing I want to cover is the price. This thing retails for $330. And in my opinion, that price tag is a little bit ambitious. In that price point, you have Sony's XM4, you have the Bose QuietComfort series. And if you're looking specifically for a gaming headset, you have the Astro A50s, which are $300 and the SteelSeries Arctis 7 Pros, I believe they're called. I do honestly feel like these headphones should go for a the 200 to 230 dollar mark i think that is a more accurate price point for this headset due to the way it feels and the fact that it is very niche as it is only a well above average headset for pc they do sound pretty damn good you can find these for sale on their website as well as amazon i will have both of those links listed down there in the description below drop in the comment section your opinion of this headset have you tried them would you like to try them or what headset are you currently using and i'll see you tomorrow Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. Check out Into the AM for some of the sickest looking and most comfortable cloth to ever grace my my gaming giblets. If you don't want to be scorching your corneas with harmful blue light, check out Gamer Advantage, the only blue light glasses on the market that look sexy and actually work. If you're looking for a custom controller that'll blow the competition's tits back, AIM definitively has the best bang for buck or price to performance when it comes to Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch controllers. Nope, they don't do Switch, but they do do gaming mice. I said doo-doo. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. If you need a quick laugh or blast of gamer adrenaline, check my short form videos out at TikTok. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace